Sup guys, it's Irv and I'm here with the Canon R3 and the Sony A7S III. Now I want to do a dynamic range test between these two bad boys because um, the Sony is like one of the best low light cameras, if not the best, and it's got S-Log3 which has amazing dynamic range and I've heard that well, I've heard a lot of great things of the Canon R3 uh, in low light and dynamic range as well. So I wanted to test the C-Log2 capabilities versus the S-Log3 and see what the differences are in range and noise. One thing to note is that the Canon R3 C-Log2 is only accessible through 6K RAW and you can't get it through 10-bit 422 profiles, uh, unfortunately but it is very capable of using the C-Log2 as we will see in these tests and I really hope that Canon implements it in their next firmware updates. Anyway, on to the test. So, I'm gonna full screen this and turn off the grades that I have on and right from the waveforms you could see that the Canon R3 and the A7S III look pretty similar. The only difference that I can see is that the S-Log3 reaches a little bit deeper into the shadows, I think. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not like a full-on colorist, but it seems to be that the blacks reach a deeper point in the S-Log3 than it does in C-Log2. Um, but when I grade the two, you can't tell the difference. They look very indistinguishable. Like, it does a really good job. Both of them do a really good job of retaining all those details. Now, the way that I expose these is with the ETTR method. I didn't do any scientific charts or anything like that, or even a gray card. I just uh, exposed to clipping and then I lowered it a little bit and then I'm now bringing all these details back in post by crushing it down. Because uh, I just want to capture all the details in the shadows as much as possible and then you know that's the way I learned how to expose log especially when I'm quick and running gunning so here is the C log 3 in comparison to C log 2 now I'm actually quite impressed with C log 3 I didn't think that it had this much detail in it it's pretty close to C log 2 but I had to add a contrast reduction because C-Log3 naturally does not look this close to C-Log2. But when you, you know, kind of squeeze in the blacks and the highlights back, it looks close enough. Now, I still prefer C-Log2. It looks more natural. It looks more clean, uh, realistic. And the C-Log3 looks a little bit muddier. So I would still prefer the C-Log2, but in general, it's still okay. When it comes to noise though, the C-Log2 does have a lot more noise than C-Log3. If you can see, well, this is S-Log3. So if you can see uh, the corner right here and the hair, there is a lot more noise in C-Log2 than there is in S-Log3. I know this says C-Log2, this is a glitch in DaVinci, but this is actually S-Log3 footage. Otherwise, I was able to match them to a pretty identical look as well. And then if you look over here, it's the same thing. 6K, 4K S-Log3, pretty identical. When you color grade these to match, the dynamic range arguably looks exactly the same. The only difference is that one you have to record through 6K RAW and the other gets it in 10-bit 422. And this is when I converted uh, at the C-Log2 into an H.264 ProRes 422 before grading just to see how much detail I lose. Uh, it's very minimal so just to show you how possible it is if they did it internally. Now this is my most aggressive test. Right here, the C-Log2, if you look right in the shadows, the noise is pretty bad. It's not terrible, but it, it's, it's definitely not as clean 
as the uh, S-Log3. But what's interesting here is when I turn on a noise reduction node into the shadows of the C-Log3, uh, C-Log2, you can barely tell the difference. Like, tell me if you can see the difference. The detail looks almost exactly the same. And I would argue that the detail in C-Log2, in the blacks, there's actually a little bit more. Look at this. You can actually see a little bit of separation here. As for S-Log3, you can. And in the highlights, let's go back. Remember, I exposed to clip, to clipping, right? So in the highlights, they look almost exactly the same as well. And you could see also in the waveform. In all of these, I've graded them to look almost exactly the same in the waveform, exposed them the exact same way, arguably, very similar and yep that pretty much uh shows you know what i was able to get out of both these cameras um c log 2 is amazing on the r6 uh, r on the r3 and s log 3 is amazing on the sony i would love to see a low light comparison which i'm going to do next i think that the sony is probably going to do a little bit better um, but I feel like if I noise reduce the R3, it's probably going to get very comparable to the Sony a7S III because I think that there's noise reduction uh, past 12,800 ISO anyway. So yeah, if you think that you, know, uh, you can add on to the information that I provided or I did something wrong or you want to discuss or you want anything further from my next uh, test from these two cameras, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to pay attention. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.